I uh, posted something a little bit earlier, and I said this video was going to be something uh, along those lines uh, about that video, and it was something where they were in other countries uh, doing more repairing and having these uh, basically these communities come together where people could get with experts and learn how to repair something versus throwing it away. And I know that the majority of my clientele off YouTube and my uh, p the people I'm mentoring to or training to, and if you're unaware of that, I do offer that service so you can get a hold of me and I can train you one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, with, with that being said, you, you aren't always just doing it to save money. Sometimes you're just doing it for the pure enjoyment or kind of like putting a puzzle together and figuring out, you know, can I do this? And then the satisfaction that comes with that. I get really excited when I see these other countries doing this, uh, this type of mentorship, especially to the youth and, and getting them outside of just throwing everything away. I mean, they're going to be the ones leading the world in the future. So if we change that mentality while they're young, I think that is amazing. So I encourage you, uh, parents and, and people out there, don't be afraid to get your, uh, your kiddos into uh, some type of technical hands-on and uh, not just, just sports or, you know, give them something they're absolutely going to be able to use the rest of their life. Nothing against sports. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so check that video out. What made me reflect on today was I got asked to fix a dishwasher, and I'm not going to lie. I was like, a dishwasher? You know, uh, but under the circumstances, it was for Mr. and Mrs. Iowa, my ch friend Chad, it was his wife, and uh, <laughs> they're really good friends, and Chad would have fixed this thing, you know, hands down, no problem at all, but he's not able to, to say what he did right now, and so kind of needed just to start over. And talking to Roseanne, it, I'm so proud of her. It was pretty amazing that she said, uh, okay, I learned from two guys, her husband and me, this thing called YouTube. And she had already done the research by the time I got there. And we had an idea of at least what it wasn't. They had already tried these things. They tried to clean the filter. And <clears throat> uh, it's, a, it's a pretty high-tech dishwasher where it's digital, a million different settings and so on. The thing is so high-tech, it has an app you can download. And... Uh, put your smartphone next to it, run the machine, it records it, and then sends it to a technician. And I, I don't go, know any further what happens from there if they listen to it and they, they know a sound is this or that or whatnot. But fantastic. I mean, I'm looking at this uh, dishwasher just thinking, what the hell? <laughs> They're pretty crazy. So, uh, but we, I really didn't believe it was anything uh, super electrical, other than possibility that was leading towards the, the water pump was possibly bad. What this has to do with this video and recycling and repairing and everything else was if I just followed the manual, the manual is really specific. It wasn't a service manual, it was the owner's manual by the way, so it was a little limited. But it basically said when you get this code, the filters are plugged or the hose is kinked. And if those two don't work, you know, Chad and I are obviously mechanics enough to where we know, well, if it won't pump the water out, it's got to be electrical to the pump or it's got to be the pump. But here's the thing. That pump is buried, okay? So it is, I'd have to pull the dishwasher out, disconnect it, and it's a significant amount of disassembly to get to that. So the reason that I'm talking about every mechanic should know this, and I have that playlist, and I, I uh, tell people all the time, like, you know, watch my every mechanic should know this videos. That's the stuff we're learning that's not in the books and not in the manuals. Because with that knowledge, you can do things differently. And what happened in this case, instead of tearing it apart, I just stopped, I paused, I stared at it for a second, and I really got to thinking, I had some rough idea that there was some type of flapper valve down underneath it, and I thought, you know, if I could get some suction through that discharge line and push some pressure, and if I could fill it shut, I know that the gate is closing, and if I could, you know, get it to pop, I know that I could uh, get it to, you know, pull through. And my curiosity was, a lot of times with uh, modern, you know, uh, equipment, there's sensors, and like if that gate isn't shutting, I had a feeling, without a wiring diagram, I just had a feeling that it was probably either st stuck shut or stuck open, and, and then not allowing the water pump to turn on, like a safety relay. Anyway, long story short, I literally, all I did, grabbed this hose... It thought of it like siphoning, siphoning fuel out of a gas tank, uh, pulled some suction on it, pushed it back in, tried like crazy not to get a mouthful of uh, dishwater uh, water, and uh, did this a few times and, and got it to where it was pulling through, and then I ran it through a cycle, machine worked flawless, no problems. I mean, think about that. How did I fix it? 
I fixed it with just every mechanic skills, the, those skills that I reference a lot. I mean, saved a ton of work. Uh, Roseanne and I were high-fiving, like, wow, this is great, you know, and uh, I, I just was reflecting on that video that was up earlier, just thinking that, you know, if you seriously want to be a mechanic or, or even as a hobbyist and wrench on things and, and you always just follow that checklist in the manual, sometimes you cause yourself a whole bunch of extra work. So learn some of these other skills, and I think you'll really uh, enjoy being a mechanic or fixing things a lot more.